ideal situation in Alberta, that's for sure. Unless you live in Lloydminster, Alberta. Now, that's the town that straddles Alberta and Saskatchewan divide. But the vaccination program in that town is run by Saskatchewan authorities. And doors, so doors will be open in clinics Thursday. And maybe Amanda should be taking the kids down there. And the anger in Alberta is becoming political. The liberal leader in the province is calling for the resignation of the conservative health minister, Ron Leipert. Well, uh, you know, there are some towns that are getting it right. We want to say that it's all not bad news. Take, Nor take North Bay, Ontario, for example. This weekend, while clinics were closed in Alberta, they were booming in the Bay. Jim Chirico is with the North Bay Parry Sound District Health Unit. He joins me now. Uh, so from what I hear, you had a pretty good weekend. Paint me a picture of what was going on in the clinics this weekend in North Bay. Well, we were um, really fortunate to uh, kind of learn from our mistakes. And uh, in the first week, we had very little uh, warning as to exactly uh, how many people were going to show up, how much vaccine um, that we'd have. And so initially, we rolled it out and we saw that there was going to be a pretty high uh, activities. So we really had to, uh, I think there were two reasons why on the weekend we had some success. And it was really a tremendous community effort. Uh, we mobilized all of our resources within our health unit and uh, our community partners. And secondly, we listened to the public's concerns or complaints or criticisms, and we really did adapt quickly. Uh, okay, well, but break, break that down for us, I know, because I want to know exactly how you did it, because I'm sure there are a lot okay. of people figuring out, okay, well, what sure. was their secret to success here? What we did was we added clinics, we extended hours, uh, we changed locations to meet the demands, we added staff. What we did was we learned to quickly get people out of the cold into a, we changed the venue to our local hockey arena. Uh, there's a lot better parking. So we were able to get them out of the cold. We got them into a relaxed environment. We had um, them screened at the door quickly, given numbers. Uh, they were able to uh, go and sit in the stand. Uh, we also had seating areas for the disabled and, uh, and uh, those that had strollers. We had breastfeeding areas. Uh, we also had good access to washrooms. We opened concession stands. Uh, and we had some widescreen TVs where we had uh, educational cartoons for the kids. We even had some of the kids singing on the overhead mic. So it was more of a relaxed atmosphere and people didn't mind sort of sitting and waiting. Uh, we called numbers and people would come up and then we had it all set up that the flow would be in one particular direction so that uh, they came in, they got immunized, they went to a recovery area for about 15 minutes and then they were able to pre-book uh, the second dose for children at uh, one of our community partners, One Kids Place, uh, for 21 days later. But the biggest thing, too, is that we had our staff were really phenomenal. They walked around very cheerful. They uh, helped people out, answered questions. And with, within our whole uh, health unit department, you know, no, no job uh, was too small for anybody. They had everybody doing everything. So and, how, how uh, many people did you get in and out the doors over the weekend? We were doing about 300 an hour. So we ended up getting over 4,000 people done. And uh, the longest wait was maybe an hour and a half. And the shortest wait was like 20 minutes while they filled out their, their registration and right into line, got the needle and were out. So, and I understand even you got in the action and you were helping immunize people. <laughs> yes, I was, I was immunizing and... Uh, I tell you, our quality assurance was working well because uh, my staff kept coming back and giving me heck for not doing the proper documentation, which I had to correct, but I did. So, it, it, yes, it was uh, everybody worked. But Jim, tell me something. And you know, we've we've had this discussion as as we're talking about our coverage over this. Is it seems that in some small towns it's working, and obviously part of that is due to the the, the you know smaller numbers that you would as compared to obviously the big cities. But is there more to it than just that? Yes. There is. Uh, it has to be a community effort. You have to mobilize all your resources. And it's particularly uh, probably uh, easier in a smaller community because I, I was born and raised here. I know a lot of people and, and I know the community really stands behind each other to help. And so while given the ability to uh, really uh, get the people we needed, we started um, organizing our um, our uh, centers for uh, the flu centers for assessment 
uh, and treatment uh, months ago. So we were able to recruit a lot of people for that, and we just adapted. So we had paramedics working, we had registered nurses, we had RPNs, we had retired nurses that we had all um, looked look for. We had uh, supervised um, uh, nursing students coming down to help us. So that really made it uh, uh, really helpful to, to, to get people done quickly. Well, I think it's really important for a lot of people to hear that there are some success stories out there, and I really hope that uh, other communities can learn from North Bay's example. Uh, Dr. Jim Chirico, thank you so much for talking to us tonight. Thank you very much. Well, we'll have much more on this uh, story straight ahead. I'll speak with a street nurse from Toronto who says the city is failing when it comes to protecting the homeless from H1N1. And we'll also have this.